Welcome to church today. Yo, yo, yo. We got so much in store for you. We really do. And you know what we're going to start off with? We're going to start off with our core values. values. So, do you remember our values? I remember some things. Okay, he remembers some things. We're going to start off with value number one. Uno. Yes. Uno. Which is love... God! Love God! Yes, love God is our first value. Nice. Now, Nazi, tell us why we love God. We love God because God is love, and he first loved us. And I'm so glad that you remembered that. Look at you. Yeah, I yes. did my best. I like that one. Wonderful. All right, uh, our second value is loving pizzas. Love people! People? People. We love people? Pizza's not a people. Why do we love people, January? Okay, we love people because God loves all people. That's a really good reason. We should love all people then. We should. Yeah. Pizza's included? I'd love pizza too. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, but our third value is do your best. Do your best. Do your best. And say it with us on the count of three. One, two, three. Do, do your, your best. best. That's now, right. Now, what happens when we do our best, Najee? When we do our best? God does the rest. He does the rest. He does the yes. rest. Now, our fourth and final core value is... Have fun. Have fun. That's right. We have fun, and we want you to have fun. So the reason we have fun is because God, God gives, gives us joy. joy. So let's stand up on our feet and have some joy, and let's worship. All right, you guys. Let's stand up on our feet. Let's get ready to worship. Let's sing it out. The Chosen One. He's the chosen one, he's the champion, the winner for all time. With me to the end, Jesus is my friend, he's always by my side. Anything I face, he will be my strength. Fade 
Sing to the Lord. I've searched the world for a love that could fill my heart. Nothing compares to the wonder of who Holy, all the earth singing holy, all the angels cry. Job, everyone. Let's keep worshiping God. Give Him all that you have. He's the Lord. Jesus. 
Come on, let's sing out. Sing out to him. Sing worthy. Lift your voice. worshiping everyone. All right, let's all bow our heads and close our eyes, and we're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus, that we get to join with the angels, with all the heavens, and sing, worthy are you. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. We love you, and we praise you today, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Great job, everybody. What's up, guys? I'm Holly. It's so great to see you today. Let's stand to our feet and get ready for the memory verse. The first time, I'm going to say it. Then the second time, you're going to repeat after me. And the third, we're going to say it together. If you got it, give me two thumbs up. This time, you're watching me. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14. This time, you're going to repeat after me. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. 
do everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14. Awesome job, you guys. Now we're going to say it together. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14. Awesome job, guys. Keep practicing, and we'll see you next time. Welcome to this week's episode of The Tracers. This is a story about a problem. Well, several problems, really. Problems that started a long, long time ago. They are problems that people just like you and me are faced with every day. In these situations, we don't always know what to do. The answer isn't always easy to figure out. In the Bible, there is a story about a man named Daniel who lived a very long time ago. Daniel was faced with many different trials, problems, and difficult situations during a culture and time when it wasn't always cool to do the right thing. Not only was it not cool, but you could sometimes get into some serious trouble for doing the right thing. It was quite the dilemma to be in. While Daniel didn't always know the right thing to do, he knew who to talk to. Join me as we learn more about the Daniel Dilemma. There's a neighborhood where a group of kids known as the Tracers regularly solve the locals' biggest mysteries. Mrs. Sally's trash can has been stolen. That's right, I said stolen. This is Q. Q is a great guy. He likes most of the things we all like. He likes watching movies, eating pizza, playing games, and swimming with sharks. Okay, yeah, that last one was pretty strange. Q is having a problem. He's faced with a dilemma. Q is starting a new school year at a new school. He doesn't think that he knows anybody there. He doesn't think that he has any friends. And he doesn't feel like he fits in. You see, anywhere else he goes, Q knows who he is. He has friends. He has things he likes, things he doesn't like. He dresses the way he likes to dress. He listens to music that he knows he should be listening to. However, he's in a new environment. He doesn't know anyone. He's starting to question who he is. Is he cool enough? Will the other kids think he's cool? Will he make any new friends? It's a hard thing to know, and it can be scary. As Q walked through the halls, he thought to himself, man, this is all so new. I feel so alone. What can I do to fit in? Do I need to change who I am? Hey, that guy has a cool hat. Maybe if I wear that hat, People will like me. Hey, that person's wearing really cool glasses. Maybe if I had glasses like them, I could have more friends. Man, look at that sweater. Not only would I be warmer, I bet I could be cooler too. Those sunglasses are awesome. Love that cowboy hat, that jacket, I need it. Whoa, that dude's wearing a necktie. That scarf is the coolest. So now we have a problem. Q has compromised who he is so much that he has lost himself somewhere beneath all that mess. Jesus knew this would be a difficult thing that we would face. He knew that this was something we could never overcome on our own, so he promises to help us if we ask. You see, in Q's case, He's going to be so much happier standing up for who he is in Jesus and knowing who God made him to be than trying to become like everyone else around him. Let me show you a story about what happens when we compromise and then what happens when we don't compromise.
the Bible, there is a story about standing firm in a culture of compromise. There is a story of Daniel and his friends who had been captured and brought to live in Babylon. While they were there, King Nebuchadnezzar sent out some of his leaders to search the kingdom for men who were qualified to serve in the king's palace. They were to be brought into the palace, and there they would be trained in the ways and culture of the Babylonians. Well, Daniel and three of his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, were among some of these very smart men chosen by the king. So they were brought to the palace to live and to learn. These four men were men of God, and they had very strong beliefs and principles on which they lived their lives. The way they lived their lives honored God, and how they talked, how they acted towards others, what they ate, and how they dressed. However, they found something to be very strange. The Babylonian culture was so strong and prevalent that they didn't want anything from Israel to be brought into their culture. So they tried to change everything about them, how they talked, how they dressed, what they ate, and they even changed their names. During that time, there were certain foods that Israelites couldn't eat because of Jewish customs. Daniel and his friends didn't want to compromise their beliefs just because they were in this new culture. So Daniel prayed to God and asked for wisdom to know what to do. Daniel then went and talked with the official to see if it would be all right if he and his friends ate different foods. They didn't want to be disrespectful, but they wanted to eat cleaner foods like vegetables and grains. The official was worried that he would get in trouble if the king found out because he thought Daniel and his friends would become unhealthy. The amazing thing is that instead of becoming sick or unhealthy, Daniel and his friends actually became stronger and healthier than anyone who was eating the food from the king's table. This story shows us that standing up for the truth and who we are in Jesus is always the best thing to do even when everyone around us might be making different choices or even bad choices. Here at Q's school, he had a lot of decisions to make and a lot of things to stand up for. Sometimes it's hard to stand up for what we believe, especially when everyone around you doesn't believe or stand up for the same things as you. But that should never change our decision. We should make our mind up every day, as soon as we wake up, that we're going to be like Jesus, make good choices, and do the right thing no matter what anyone else does or thinks. Being a light and standing up for what's right in a world that's compromising what it believes is the only way that anything can ever change. Standing up for what's right is important to God and it should be important to us. And that's why today's main point is I can be like Jesus. Join us next time as we journey deeper into the story and learn more about the Daniel Dilemma.